Good morning. I am in beautiful Costa Rica right now with our mission team sharing the gospel and ministering with our church here, Templo Bautista de Attendance, essentially Willowbrook, Costa Rica. And uh, I am so sorry you're not here with us right now. And let's explore Genesis 27 today, the very end of that chapter and then the first part of 28. We see Jacob leaving his family to go and find a wife. Now, he was under some duress at this moment as Esau sought to kill him. And we read in the previous verses that Esau listened more to his stomach than he did to God. He sold his birthright to his younger brother, Jacob, for some stew. And when Jacob deceives his own father right after that, he receives the blessing that it was initially meant for Esau. And you thought you might have a mess in your family. This mess would qualify as the next controversial Netflix series for sure. Uh, so after this happens, Rebecca sends him away to her brother Laban to lay low for a while and to and, and actually find himself a wife. She really didn't want him uh, marrying a worthless local woman. So she sent him and Isaac and Rebecca uh, are in agreement to send him on this journey. And then Isaac knowingly this time blesses him as he goes. And then in verses three and four, we see Isaac name God as El Shaddai, as he blesses Jacob uh, before he departs. It means God Almighty. And this was the name of sovereign power that God used when he reaffirmed his promise to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 17. I believe like Isaac and Jacob, we can all receive encouragement from that name, El Shaddai. God is always sovereignly powerful, orchestrating all things to accomplish his will and to see his promises through to the end. And in Hebrew, this name means more than enough and it speaks to the, the sufficiency of our Heavenly Father. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful name and a great reminder here in these verses. So Isaac's words to him indicate that he expects Jacob to return to take his part of the land promised to them. And God would be faithful. And it must have been an, an anxious, anxious time of change for Jacob, who was more of a uh, domestic personality. And, uh, and, and so as we look through these verses, we also, so we also see that Jacob shows obedience and faith in leaving and marrying back into a family line more akin to God's design. Esau apparently wants to follow suit when he hears what's going on. He wants to win back some of the affections of his parents. And just as he saw uh, Jacob's obedience, he too would attempt to marry someone of a closer bloodline, probably in an attempt to negate some of his wrongs. Um, like, you know, openly planning to kill his brother. So he's trying to make up for that. However, with Esau, it happened like it does with many of us. Um, he did what made good sense to him and not what made sense to God and what he commanded. While he was trying to marry a woman from Abraham's family, he chose the line of Ishmael, a family God had rejected. And what's more is this, he already had pagan wives as, as it were. And, and what a swing and a miss when it comes to his attempt at obedience. He had it all wrong. Doesn't this sound about like all of us at times, finding ourselves in trouble, making poor decisions, and then compounding the issue by trying to fix things ourselves, by trying to impress God or others with our own rash and hasty decisions, by trying to cover up or undo our issues all on our own and all by ourselves. Now, in the midst of this messy episode in the Bible, we must conclude that there is no way but God's way. Stop, we should stop trying to fix the problems we have all on our own with our own reasoning and our own understanding and our own broken motives. And instead, we should trust God and lean into His way no matter what situation we, might, we may find ourselves in. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty, and He is for you. Trust in Him, let Him direct you, minister to you, and guide you with His sovereign, mighty hand today. I hope that that encourages you uh, this morning, and we've enjoyed be being here, ministering with our church in Costa Rica. We hope you've had a great week too, and a great weekend ahead. We look forward to seeing you next week.